Today I'm going to teach you how to make your own herbal homestead infused oils. You'll need these to make salves and some other soaps and products on your homestead. So today we're going to go over the infused oils and then I'm going to show you how to make your own healing salve. So salve or salve, however you say it, depends on where, you, where you're from. But today we're going to go over infused oils and salves, as I said in the beginning. And this is a really, really easy task. Something that any homesteader can begin with. If you're wanting to get into herbalism, this might be the best place for you to begin with making products. Now I know making products with herbs can be a little bit intimidating, but it doesn't have to be. So um, in past videos, we've gone over how to make tinctures or salves, uh, not salves, but infused oils. And there's a couple different ways to make infused oils, but before you can make a salve, you have to make an infused oil most of the time. Now, there are some salves that we make that are just used strictly with essential oils, and that's okay. You don't have to worry about making an infused oil at that point. You just buy the essential oil. But today, we're actually using calendula, chamomile, and arnica oil. Um, we don't have those in essential oils. We have them in infused oils. So, there are a couple different ways for you to make the infused oil before you make your salve. Um, the most commonly popular way that you're going to find online is to fill your jar up with one part herb and five parts oil. Uh, I just use olive oil, you can use fractionated coconut oil, grapeseed oil, whichever you prefer, but I prefer to use olive oil just because it's readily available at all times. And so you're gonna weigh it out for a one ounce herb to five ounces of oil. Now, this is calendula. You can see that the oil does not cover the entire thing, part of calendula, but you're gonna fill your jar up, you're gonna shake it really well, and that's gonna sit in a sunny area for about four weeks. Um, that's just to ensure that you get all the best extraction from the oil. That's the hard way or the long way to make an infused oil. The next way to make an infused oil is to actually put the oil in your oven. So what you do is you would set your oven at 300 degrees, measure out your herb and your oil in a jar, in a glass jar just like this. And once your temperature has reached 300 degrees, you turn your oven off put your jar into the oven and allow it to set for two to three hours. You're not wanting to bake or cook the herb, you're just wanting the heat to heat up the herb and extract it. The final way to make an infused oil is to do your same ratio, your one to five ratio, one ounce herb, five ounces of oil, and um, to put it in a double boiler on your stove top. Uh, that takes about 30 minutes to an hour, just depending on your um, herb and how hot it is in your oven. So that's the next way to make an infused oil. Three easy, very easy ways. One's more time consuming than the other. Um, I typically opt for the oven option. I actually have herbs in the oven right now that I will show you. I've um, extracted chamomile and arnica. This is calendula that I actually had extracting for four weeks um, in my bathroom cabinet, medicine cabinet, which gets a lot of sunlight. Uh, sometimes so I went ahead and put that in there. So I'm gonna get started and we're gonna make a homestead salve. Hmm. I've gotten my herbs out of the oven. This is the chamomile. Oh my gosh, chamomile is my favorite herb to extract in oil. It smells, oh my goodness, I could eat it. Now, your oils are going to need to be strained. I'm going to go ahead and strain it through a mesh strainer, but sometimes for certain herbs, um, they can actually, the herbs can slip through the strainer. But I'm going to go ahead and try the strainer first, and um, you're going to need to go ahead and separate them into separate jars, because um, I'm actually going to be using these probably more than one time. And you're just going to go ahead and push down and get all of that oil out. Now there is some of the flower head that's coming through and that's okay, but I may want to go ahead and put it through a mesh um, towel just one more time just to make sure we get all of that out. <music>
Draining the oils is probably one of the messiest jobs you'll have during this entire process. So you're gonna get dirty. Make sure you wash your hands after each straining of each oil. That way you don't have any contamination and that oil isn't soaking into your skin for a really long time. So now that you've made and strained your uh, infused oils, now you're gonna wanna make a salve or some kind of product with them. Today I'm gonna show you how to make a salve. Um, now it's best if you go ahead and do your infused oils ahead of time. Once you make your infused oil, you can actually keep it on the shelf for about a year. So you can make it way in advance and then use it when you need it. Now I'm probably going to have some of that oil left, so I'll just keep it in the pantry um, out of the sunlight and it'll stay good for a year. Now, your next step with making a salve, your friend is going to be your kitchen scale. You're going to need to measure out your oils because you want to know how much exactly you're putting into your salve. Um, you're going to have your infused oils, your beeswax, and then you're also going to add, um, you can add essential oils or things like that, but today we're just using the infused oils and beeswax, so I'm going to show you how to do that. All right, so with this nifty kitchen scale, if you go ahead and put your jar on first, it's actually going to measure out the tear for you. This is the Oziri scale. It's really good, great, love it. So you're just going to hit the on button. It's going to calculate the weight for you, and it's going to start at zero. So for starters, I need two ounces of calendula oil, one and a half ounces of arnica, one ounce of chamomile. So I'm going to go ahead and measure that all out. I've gone ahead and I've just made it all six ounces even. So I put in just roughly one and a half ounces of the beeswax, give or take. You can add more, play with the recipe to what you like. Now we're gonna take this and set it and make a makeshift double boiler and melt it all down. Now I've got a saucepan here that's heating up. It's on a medium heat. You don't want it to be boiling, but you do want it to be hot water. I'm gonna go ahead and set my jar down in there. The reason that we put the water in there is so that we're not scorching the the oil or the herb. Now I'm just going to let it sit there for a few minutes as the water heats up and then I'm going to come in, come in and stir it really good. Once it's completely stirred and combined then we're going to go ahead and put it in our little tins and it'll dry and be done. All right, all our beeswax is melted. Now we're gonna to need to pour it immediately into our tins. And just like that, you have your very own salve. Now this particular salve with the calendula, arnica, and chamomile, we use this specifically for boo-boos and bruises, um, to heal wounds, uh, if you've had a cut or a scrape, this is great for that. This is also great healing for sore muscles, it helps relax um, the body, and it's just a really great salve to have. So here's what it ends up looking like. And it's just really great to have. Here's what it looks like. You just rub it like this and put it on and you're done. So there's your basic salve recipe for the day. I encourage you to make it. Make your infused oils, make your salves. They do really, really well. They hold up well. they last uh, about a year in your medicine cabinet or pantry. And it smells really good too, so. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe. Feel free to, free to share it. Um, hope you guys have a great day. Happy homesteading.